is Tommy Godwith, and I'm an Iraq War veteran. Originally, I intended this story to be specifically about me and my experience as a veteran, my stories from Iraq, the challenges I faced as a woman in the military, the emotions and difficulties I experienced returning home from war. Then I realized two things. One, that would take way too much time. And two, every time someone asks, so what are you going to talk about? My answer seemed to address one underlying question. If I only had a few minutes to tell you the most important things to know about veterans, what would I say? First, some background about me. I grew up in a little town called Bemidji, Minnesota. It is the first city on the Mississippi River, and it gets very, very cold there in the wintertime, which, as you might guess, can last six or seven months each year. We drive our trucks and huts out onto the frozen lakes to fish. We eat brave temperatures reaching double digits below zero. We love our summer camping trips, bonfires, and lakes. My brothers and I were taught as kids that we should give back to our community, volunteer, care for those less fortunate than ourselves, learn the value of sacrificing our preferences and comfort to try to make the world a better place for all of us. We each took that principle to heart and put it into practice in our own way. My brother Abe and I have been best buddies our whole lives. When he enlisted with the local National Guard unit in November of 1998, it took me only two months to follow suit. Our military paths have overlapped and diverged through the years. Abe is the one who made sure that I finished officer candidate school, the one who convinced me month after month to keep going. He has been my key to understanding the common ground between veterans and non-veterans. See, Abe has dealt with a lot of challenges similar to mine, but he's not a veteran. And that made me think, there must be a lot of these so-called veteran issues that are really just people issues. So my military story, is that I enlisted in the Minnesota National Guard in 1999 as a light mill vehicle mechanic in support of a mechanized infantry company. The military calls everything under 50 tons light, so I was working on Humvees, two and a half ton trucks, five ton trucks, and occasionally a trap vehicle called the Bradley Fighting Vehicle. I went to basic training and mechanic school in 1999. <coughs> I later switched to the officer side of the ranks, completing officer candidate school in 2002 and military intelligence officer school in 2003. I deployed to Camp Taji, Iraq with 26 strangers, all men, in December 2004. I was one of the lucky ones. I deployed for only one tour, came back in one piece, and did not lose any family members back home while I was away. Camp Taji was muddy when I got there, hot the rest of the time, and dangerous. My deployment job was to run the access control policy for a base that housed 22,000 people. I worked at the main gate, three soldiers, two Iraqi interpreters, and I worked seven days a week to screen and badge the people, goods, and vehicles entering our base. We had our share of unpleasant events, dust storms, and new misses. So how does someone who's been immersed in war get back to normal? I call it the getting out of badass mode. <laughs> And it takes a while. There's actually a lot in common among all people who have gone through traumatic experiences. It is easy to feel isolated if we focus on details. Every person surviving trauma experiences it differently. So here are the parts I say we all have in common. It feels like we need to hide, but we don't. We crave danger once we've tasted it. We now appreciate a bunch of stuff we never noticed before. And we all need a good listener. My first year back was plagued with terrible nightmares, waking up in pools of sweat, daytime moments of sudden, inexplicable anxiety. I spent the 4th of July with tears running down my face, ashamed that the celebration reminded me of explosions. Apparently, we veterans often return home with a high demand for stimulation. Guns, motorcycles, metal, extreme sports, increased vulnerability to alcohol and substance abuse, and our signature, I don't give up, attitude, are those traits unique to veterans? No. Veterans come all the way home by remapping our memory associations of toughness and character building to something closer to home. Skydiving and bungee jumping are fine, but training for an endurance event like a 10K, a warrior dash, or tough mutter addresses that common need for stimulation, camaraderie, and danger without further isolating us. You want a really cool conversation? Ask a veteran about the simple things they didn't even realize they appreciated until deployment. Here's a conversation that anyone can participate with. Tell me about something you never really appreciated until you went without it for a while. 
My list includes a bed, my bathtub, fresh flowers, and bare feet in the grass. There were a few people who came out of the woodwork to pray for me and hold me in remembrance while I was gone. The best decision I made post-deployment was to take all the time and road miles necessary to meet with them and thank them in person. People want to make conversation with veterans, but they find themselves at a loss for what to say. So let's talk first about what not to say. Don't say, did you kill anybody? What was the worst thing that you saw? Did you lose any buddies in the war? Were you in the dangerous part or the safe part of the country? <laughs> Do ask about funny moments, relationships, and events that build character. My list would include office pranks, bobbleheads, young Omar's marriage proposals, Ashley the Apache pilot, and Mustafa's questions about sex. <laughs> I don't do veteran parades, veteran recognition events, thank a veteran days. You know who does those? The hat guys. And for good reason. We veterans can get so isolated that the only way to connect with each other is to show up at a public event wearing a hat that identifies us. I'm going to ask something a little unorthodox on behalf of myself and all veterans. Don't thank me. Talk to me. One good listener is better than a thousand handshakes. So remember the question I asked at the beginning. If I only had a few minutes to tell you the most important things to know about veterans, what would they be? You can't tell who the veterans are by looking. The thing we need most is a good listener. And one good listener can bring us one step closer to coming all the way home. Wonderful.